You've been applying for robotics engineering positions and the day has come when you get an email for an interview. But what happens next? What to expect from a robotics engineering interview process? Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and I'm a robotics software engineer at Boston Dynamics AI Institute. I've been in the industry for a few years and I've given my fair share of interviews. Today, I want to talk about the entire process from the time you get the interview called. The first few steps are very similar to most engineering positions. So I go through them very quickly. And then on site is where I go into more details and depth on what to expect for a robotics engineering position. I'll include the timings in the description. So without further ado, Let's get into it. All right, so the very first step in the interview process is going to be a conversation with the talent acquisition team or HR. In this step, they're trying to gauge if you're a good fit. They will ask you questions about your resume as well as what you're looking for. This is a good step to also talk about what are the things you're looking for, be it internship, co-op, full-time, when you can join, what are your requirements, if you're currently working, are there any restrictions? And this is also a good place to talk about visa. This is also a place where they will tell you about the interview process for the company you are interviewing for. This is also a good time for you to ask what the team or the hiring manager is looking for from the candidate for this particular position. This will help you prepare better for your interview. After this, the second step will be a technical screen. This will most likely be with a member of the team or the manager. In this step of the interview process, you will go more in depth in your resume. The manager will ask about your projects, Have you worked with any professors, experience at your previous companies or internship experiences? You can also talk about your extracurricular activities. Here's a tip for you. Make sure you have one or two projects which you can talk at length for. They'll also ask you questions about specific skills. For example, with robotic software engineering positions, they'll ask you questions about C++, Python or ROS. Here's another tip. This is a great place to ask information about the team and how you as a candidate would fit in. This is a good idea to get information about the challenges the team is currently facing and how you as a candidate could help solve that. So this technical screen is more verbal and it's a more conversation style interview. And along with this, there's another step of testing those skills before on-site. Now, different companies do this differently. Some companies will do an online coding challenge wherein you are sharing your coding screen and solving it live with another person from the team. And some companies go for take-home coding challenge. Challenges. If you want to know more about take home coding challenges, I'll include a link here of a video where I talk about what it is, how to go about it and how to do really good at them. If this is a software position, most likely you will get a coding challenge. If it's a hardware position, then you might also get a kit at home to assemble something or create something and solve a problem. Now, after these screenings, if you clear, you will go on to on-site interview. Now, on-site interviews are a couple of hours, so you'll most likely require half a day and also because it's a lot of talking you'll be exhausted so expect to block out an entire day now given this is almost an entire day of commitment you can take your time and give out few days a few weeks into the future as well i remember when i was a student i used to think that if i didn't do my on-site quickly the position might go away from the other side of the table i can tell you that is not always the case yes there are some times when someone's looking to fill a position quickly but majority of the times They've thought this through and they do have a few weeks of buffer time before they make a decision. As I mentioned before, when you have your first conversation with HR or someone from talent acquisition, you should ask these questions. You should ask about the timeline they have in mind for filling this position. This will allow you to make a decision on how far in the future you can schedule your on-site interview and use that extra time to prepare more. All right, with that, let's start talking about the on-site interview experiences. Now, I've given a couple of these and I have combined all the information from different interview experiences to give you an idea on what to expect. Now, generally, there are four to six rounds of interviews. Now, this can depend on the company, the position you're looking for, as well as years of experience. Now, in terms of position, I do want to make another extra 
are not. Sometimes when you're interviewing, you might think that you're interviewing for one position, but you might be interviewing for two positions. Sometimes this is made known to you and sometimes it's not made known to you. So that's why sometimes you will have interviews from two different teams and from the company standpoint, they're trying to figure out which is a better fit for you. Now, generally these interviews are one-on-one or maybe one-on-two, but there's a new trend that I have seen. It's called the presentation round. The last time I interviewed, I think three out of the 10 companies that I interviewed for requested this. So as the name suggests, it's actually a presentation that you're giving about who you are, what you've done and why you want to join this company. Depending on your years of experience and the position you are looking for, this can be anywhere between 15 to 45 minutes. You put together a presentation about who you are, your background, one to two projects that you want to talk about and present it to a group of people. Some companies keep it only for the team that you're interviewing for. Some companies keep it open and anyone from the company can come and attend that presentation. In some ways, this presentation style is a replacement for the question who you are or tell me about yourself that you have to answer for every interview round for those one-on-one rounds. Now for robotics engineering position, this is a good way to talk about your technical aspects at length. So when you're talking about a project, you can start with this is what the project does. You can include images and videos, which makes it easier for you to explain things and then talk about what it is that you have done. Another great idea is also to include your learnings, challenges you faced, how you overcome them or some of the limitations of this method. For example, let's say you worked on a research project at a university lab and you were given the task of doing a path planning algorithm for a manipulator. You can talk about different algorithms you tried and why did you go for one approach over the other. Now, if you've done research papers or posters, you can also present those during this interview round. Do expect people to ask you questions during the presentation style as well as throughout the one-on-one interview rounds. Most of the time, all the one-on-one interview rounds, people will attend your presentation style interview so that they can get to know you and then during the interview, they can just start a conversation. Now next, let's talk about these one-on-one interviews. The first interview is the technical fit for the position that you're being hired for. You can expect questions where they're trying to see if you can do the task that they have in mind for you. For example, let's say it's a warehouse robot and they are looking to do image processing. They want to detect different shelves in the warehouse to place objects. So you can expect questions on computer visions, questions on OpenCV, if they're using ROS, questions on ROS or ROS2, different object detection or object training, tracking algorithms. If there is something related to that on your resume, you can expect questions on that as well. In this round, you can also expect questions on testing. You can expect questions on CICL, on have you used GitHub, how do you track your projects, so on and so forth. They're also trying to gauge what is your level of expertise and how you will fit into the team. Are you someone who can start contributing or are you someone who would need help or are you someone who can help others as well? The second kind of interview is behavioral interview. In this interview round, you can expect questions on how you work with others, how you have done conflict management in the past, how do you deal with workload, how do you deal working with people who may not be technical and other such questions. Now, even though there's a dedicated round for behavioral, throughout your interview, people will also be checking on those aspects. So even if you may be in a technical round and you did really well, but if there are any red behavioral flags, you may not get hired. So throughout your interview process, from the time you're on site till you leave, make sure you're on your best behavior. Now, given robotics is such a technical aspect where most of the time you're implementing algorithms for specific use cases, people are now starting to ask questions about system designing. In this step, they're basically trying to figure out how do you assemble a robotics system. So continuing with our warehouse example, they may ask you an open-end question that how would you design a robot that can go around a warehouse to pick up objects and drop them off as needed. Make note of the fact that I said open-ended. The reason I said open-ended is because there isn't a specific answer they're looking for, but it's more of a discussion in terms of how you think. One thing is they're definitely trying to gauge your general knowledge about the entire system and then a specific knowledge about your area of expertise. Now, if it's a hardware interview or a hardware position, you will most likely be talking about the sensors, the motors, and how you would design the entire robot. And if it's a software position, you're more likely going to talk about the different modules how you would communicate 
it across them as well as how you would filter your sensors. So for example, with the warehouse robot, if it's hardware, you can talk about, do you have a robotic arm or do you have some kind of fixed mechanism that can pull and push trays into place? You could talk about, would it be four wheel system? Would it be three wheel system? So on and so forth. On the software side, you could talk about modules. For example, there will be a planning module that will plan path from one point of the warehouse to another. You could talk about how you would keep track of the robots. So for example, you could say that in my design, given it's a warehouse, you would have beacons and that way the robot can localize itself. You can talk about perception on how you can have QR codes to detect different objects or you could actually have an image processing algorithm to look for the specific object that it has to pull from the shelf. It's completely up to you how you want to take that discussion. But basically, they're trying to get an idea of how you think about designing a robot. Next, I want to talk about coding round. To be honest, I have done a lot of these and there are times when people are completely shocked that there is a coding interview on site. Trust me, if you're doing robotic software engineering, there will be a coding round. Either it could be live coding where you are sharing a screen and actually writing the code and running it or it could be a whiteboard where you're writing pseudo code or an actual code but you just never run it. But please keep in mind that there most likely will be a coding round. Another myth I want to break about robotic software engineering interviews when it comes to coding, your code does not have to pass to get hired. Yes, it's great if your code passes and clears all the test cases to get hired. But what's expected is you have a running code and you can think on how to solve that. Let's say you figured out an algorithm to solve the challenge and you wrote the basic code and you got most of the basic test cases passed. You don't have enough time to do the edge cases, but you ended up having a conversation on how to solve those edge cases and that you've thought about those edge cases, you can still get hired. So please do remember, yes, it's great if you can clear all the test cases and you get a great code running. But what's more important is you have a good running code that clears most of the cases and an algorithm on how you plan to solve the rest of the cases. I know this can be a little unsettling, but the main thing that they're trying to gauge is can you code and can you think logically? Because maybe you don't know how to write one particular function or maybe you're making a mistake in removing an item from the list. Those are things that you can Google on the job and solve or take somebody's help or that is something that can easily be learned, but it's much harder to teach someone to think logically. So that, according to me, is a way more important factor that they're looking for and you should make do your best to highlight. So this also means that when you're doing the coding challenge, don't just write the code and let it pass. Talk through it. As you're writing, talk about, okay, this is your approach. This is how you plan to solve it. This is why you're using list versus tuples or this is why you're using tuples versus list. Talk through your solutions. Also, if you're running into errors as you're debugging, talk through, okay, this is how I'm going to debug. I'm going to write print statements or I'm going to add in another variable just to check and see this is doing exactly as I expect or maybe you're adding breakpoints to pause and see how the code is running. But those things are really important. If this is something you want me to talk more about on how to do well in coding challenge, put it in the comments below and I'll try to make a second video. One other tip I have is make sure you also have questions to ask to the team. I've seen this a lot of times. We go through the entire interview process and then when the candidate is asked, hey, do you have any questions for me? They kind of stumble upon, they're not sure what to ask, they haven't thought about this and this makes you look slightly unprepared but also that you're more focused on solving and not making sure that you are a fit for the team and the team is a fit for you as in you're not thinking about this company seriously so do make sure you prepare questions to ask as well i wish you all the best for your interview and if you found this video helpful make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video 